Welcome everybody to chapter one of my Stranger Stuff's adventures. Stuff? Stranger Stuff adventures? Either way, what this is going to be about and why am I doing it? Real quick, I'll only take a minute of your time before we dive into the game. So at the time of recording this, I only recently started my channel and it was for Shadow Dark, which it still primarily is at this time. It's just for the month of December here now. Two of my players were not available, so I picked up two more and I decided to switch to another game temporarily for the month of December to do a Christmas themed game, a short little game. And if it catches on and people like it, I'll continue it in the future. But don't worry, we're definitely going back to Shadow Dark. As soon as January hits and my players are available again, then we're gonna go and pick, pick back that back up, back that, 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 back up. Words are hard. Yes. So, all right. So those not familiar with the Stranger Stuff system, I'm using the Tiny D6 adaptation. If you're not familiar with Tiny D6 system, real quick, real simple. You only roll D6s and a standard test is 2D6. On a 5+, plus, you succeed. If I see disadvantage, it's a single D6. And if it's advantage, you get 3D6. And you just basically need a 5 or 6 to succeed. I've added in a little home tweak here where if you roll a 1, it adds a complication. So anybody familiar with Blades in the Dark, it's kind of like that vibe where you can succeed but still have a complication. So it's a minor thing that happens. And you'll see that'll come up a lot during this game. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for the rules. Super simple. All right, and real quick, but this first chapter, I really wanted to focus on letting the players get into the mindset of being a teenager, a 13-year-old in the 80s, as well as I wanted you, the audience, to help get attached to the character. So there's a lot of character building and development in this first chapter, but there's also a lot of excitement, a lot of fun and drama and all kinds of fun stuff. Either way, hope you enjoy it. If you do, hit the subscribe button. Join me for this journey. I'd love to have you, and let's dive into it. On the drive from Castle Rock, Maine, along Interstate 50 to Hill Valley, California, you'll find an exit for US-47 that dumps you into the growing city of Sugarbush and its subterranean hellscape next to the newly built monstrosity of American capitalism, the Crossroad Mall. But before the highway runs a dozen or so miles to the sleepy town of Crestview Hills before the road continues on out of the town, meandering down to Slim River and beyond. Driving down into the valley, one would see the crest, the cliff face that the town is named for on the far side of Hawthorne River. Our story takes place in this average small town called Crestview Hills in the year 1983. With seemingly wholesome folks behind white picket fences, the kind of place with bountiful springs, endless summers, spooky autumns, and white winters. Folks that live in Crestwood Hills are the type to attend church on most Sundays, with a few families that don't regularly attend being somewhat looked down upon in small ways. The grocery store sells only groceries, none of that big box mentality, and the hardware store just serves as a do-it-yourself center. And nearly everything in this town is a mom-and-pop operation, having been in the family for many generations. Now Crestview Hills sits next to a sizable Lake Grandeur, which has a Hawthorne River flowing into and out of it with modest rapids and a few things that the locals call their falls, but tourists would not really drive here to see it. So situated in this natural river valley, the Stone Creek Mountains and Long Pine Forest keep the Crest Company. All of this leads to an ideal place ready to be explored by latchkey kids adolescents with parents that have long commutes to the city, which leave them to fend for themselves for long hours of the day, in a town that's only half as busy and bustling as it should be. It's December 13th. You four attend Crestview Hills School in an oversized building as it serves both middle and high school grades for the area. So yeah, we zoom in on Miss Doyle's grade seven English class where the four of you are in attendance. The class windows open, allowing a cool breeze. The classroom decor features vibrant green chalkboards, posters of iconic 80s uh, motifs, and of course, a map of the United States. You're all sat in wooden desks, diligently taking notes with classic ballpoint pens, pencils adorned with neon erasers or spiked haired troll pencil toppers. The students around you are wearing their best clothes to school, sporting a distinctive styles of the time, asset wash jeans, oversized sweaters, scrunchy socks, and so much neon. So at this point, we're going to go through and introduce ourselves, us as the characters. Rupert, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, that kind of thing. Well, my real name is Rupert Whitaker. But nobody calls me that. People call me Gadget. 
Um, obviously, because the latest craze, Inspector Gadget, was a big thing, and uh, people think I'm kind of like him. I'm always fiddling with uh, with gadgets and tools and tinkering with things and drawing diagrams for elaborate uh, contraptions that'll never work. I'm about, I would say, half a foot shorter than everybody else. I haven't really hit uh, any growth spurt yet. Uh, maybe about five foot tall. And um, I look very similar to that when I'm not in class. I'm usually carrying around a book bag with me anyway, full of God knows what. Very much into anything hands-on. Uh, and I am I'm, I'm fairly intelligent, but uh, more of an applied technologies kind of kid, not so much a book learning English class sort of kid. Then moving on, we have Elizabeth Baxter. Yeah, my given name is Elizabeth, but recently I've started going via Izzy. Uh, it's very important now to fit in and be extra cool. Uh, I am a little bit of a smart mouth. I'm always running around, getting into stuff, doing things, but it's the best part about being a kid. And I want to try and stand out for my siblings. And Crystal Owens. I am uh, popular at uh, like one of the popular girls at school, straight A student, not really by choice, more so by um, events. Uh, my father is a councilman, so it's expected that I have those grades. Quiet, keep to myself, try to stay out of trouble. Had a horse riding accident a few years ago that um, now I no longer can uh, ride horses because of that injury to my arm. That's about me. And I like how you said, I'll try to stay out of trouble, but yet you have the disadvantage <laughs> under your archetype that says you always find yourself getting into trouble. <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And last but certainly not least, we got Tyler Westcott. Uh, so Tyler, uh, he acts a bit of a tough kid, but he's got a good heart. Uh, very sporty and athletic, uh, you know, the hockey being his game of choice. Um, really does his best to try and look out for other kids, especially like Gadget, that um, definitely got like more of an athletic build a bit stockier than like his uh, classmates so sort of like the extra height that uh rupert's missing sort of went straight to tyler apparently uh but yeah like that's him as the four of you are there uh at the beginning of your english class miss doyle states all right dear students today's task involves a delightful exercise in honing our cursive writing abilities each one of you will have the pleasure of crafting a letter to Santa Claus, providing an excellent opportunity to showcase the cursive writing skills and letter formatting knowledge that we've uh, cultivated throughout the year. And I encourage you to apply all the valuable lessons that we've covered. So now let us embark on this festive endeavor and commence with our letter writing exploration. And with that, she has like an example letter uh, kind of written out on the chalkboard in front of you just to show you some of the general uh, places where things need to be but she's very vague because she's hoping that you'll know what goes in what places so she's like literally just wrote lines you know in different places to show you uh, how you would structure it other than that um, you all pull out your pencils I assume you're all gonna do your work is there anybody not going to do their work <laughs> Do my work. <laughs> yeah, do my work. <laughs> All right. Definitely gonna do my work. <laughs> so you pull out, yep. you start scribbling away. So I'm gonna go around and ask each of you. Um, start from the bottom this time with what? No, I know you kids are a little bit old for Santa Claus. You're 13, but again, and the teacher knows this. Um, but it's just a matter of the just a fun way to do a letter exercise. So, but besides all that, Tyler. In your letter to Santa, what are you wishing for for Christmas? From the uh, 1983 Sears Wish Book. So, <laughs> uh, just sort of say, like, hey, Santa, um, you probably already know this. Hit a bit of a growth spurt this year. Outgrew my uh, hockey gear. 
really looking to get a new set for Christmas this year. Um, you know, getting a bit uncomfortable out on the ice. Uh, so really appreciate a new set. Uh, thanks. <laughs> nice. And Crystal? Dear Santa, in like perfect cursive writing. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing that I want for Christmas. In fact, I want you to take whatever that you would have given to me and give it to those who need it most. Love, Crystal. Wow. And say hi to Mrs. Claus for me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And I'm just wondering, <laughs> is that how you truly feel? Or is that um, you trying to suck up to the teacher or put on a front? That is her putting on a front. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious yeah. as the game master. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. She'll keep her emotions kind of to herself. So Tyler genuinely has forgotten this is going to the teacher. He just thinks he's literally just going straight to the mails. For you, for you as the game master, <laughs> she would rather write down, I want my family fixed. But she's not going to. Uh, she yeah. was taught to never show emotions. Her family is all about keeping up appearances. For sure. Okay. And uh, Izzy, <laughs> how's your letter to Santa? <laughs> It's definitely nice handwriting, but like not anywhere near how nice Crystal's is. Um, and there's little swirls every once in a while that should not be there, but are my personality. It's like, hey, Santa, uh, it's probably going to be one of the last letters I'm writing to you. But um, yeah, I guess if I'm looking for a few things, um, I really like a port set player. They're so cool. And everybody has them. Uh, maybe a couple art supplies and... Like those new slap bracelet things? I'd really like those. But I hope you guys are good. Take care of you and the reindeer. Easy. Slap bracelets. <laughs> they were all the craze. <laughs> they were. <laughs> oh, Cut man. your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, Gadget. Like, what's on Gadget's Christmas list? Very chicken scratch writing. Uh, dear Santa, I would like the Scale Mercury Redstone Model Rocket First Man Ballistic Space Vehicle, kit number K-41, with the recommended engine C6-5 with dual parachute recovery. And then I'll sign my name. <laughs> and I'll do a model, a scale model uh, diagram of the rocket. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. Well, so very let's... precise. Yes, exactly. I'll be right on that elves. Get the elves right on that one. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> with that, now you're all scribbling away, doing your work, and you look over throughout this uh, class. One of your classmates, Peter Gumman, and you see that kid, and he speaks up. Uh, uh, Miss, how do you spell chimney? And then Miss Doyle tells him. And a few minutes go by, and Peter speaks up again. Uh, miss, how do I spell important? And the teacher tells him again. At this point, the kids begin to snicker at Peter, but they just continue on with their work. And as the class progresses, Peter persistently requests increasingly elementary words, each one seemingly contributing to the growing tide of amusement within the room. And what began as a mere undercurrent of snickering gradually swells into unrestrained laughter that echoes throughout the classroom. With every new word uttered, the collective glee of his classmates intensifies, which adds to Peter's growing frustrations. Um, any of you four, would you be laughing at Peter as he's constantly asking the teacher how to spell simple words? I'm not. I have a ruler out, protractor. I am way into this model drawing. Yeah, no. I don't know uh, anybody I, else is in the classroom. Yeah, no, I definitely wouldn't. And like when a kid like nears me starts to snicker, I'm going to like kick their chair. And when they turn over, I'm just going to flash them a look to try and get them to settle down. <laughs> All right. Um, give me an intimidation test. 
Oh, what, just uh, this is just a standard check. I'm guessing. I don't think I have anything for intimidation. <laughs> nope, this is a standard one. Okay. Ooh, first roll. <laughs> that's ooh, that's a fail. It's a fail <laughs> with a complication. So, okay. um, you do that, and when you kick the desk and you give that look, the teacher, Ms. <sighs> Doyle, looks at you and <sighs> says, "Tyler, who are you to damage school property? Stick to your own work." And she's like yes, looking Mr. at Doyle. you, pointing a three-foot metering stick at you. You've disappointed your teacher with your aggressive behavior. I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All Love right. it. <laughs> All right. Oh, the other two girls were either of you uh, snickering, or and or laughing. <laughs> No, um, I would kind of scowl at anyone who laughed at him, and then I would just kind of like look over my shoulder towards him, and I'd just kind of give him like a bit of a, like a sad look. And you, Izzy? Uh, how close are our desks? Like, am I close enough to him? A uh, luck test is a standard test. So roll 2d6, and if you're successful, you're lucky. Lucky with a complication. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I don't think Our I'll... just getting annoyed. Well, I don't think a complication makes sense for this <laughs> no, Not really for luck as such. Um, no. It's possible, but... No, I'll say, uh, yeah, you're lucky enough. You're sitting fairly close to him. The desks are, like, in the background image that you can see there. I'll say you're in front of. Okay. In the chair like to, directly um, in front of him. I'd like to scribble him a little note and be like, I can help you if you want. And you're going to pass it back to him? Yeah. All right. Sleight of hand, which I think you have advantage on. I have dexterous. Would that be easy? Yeah, you can click on it to expand it. And I think it'll say underneath it there that sleight of hand, picking locks, all that kind of fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, you get him the note successfully. But then as you're pulling your hand back... Uh, and you spin back around in your chair, it caught the gaze of the teacher. Can I actually interrupt? And can I have watched this and put up my hand and be like, I have to go to the bathroom and hopefully get the teacher's attention away? <laughs> okay. All right. So what essentially happened is she did not see you pass a note. She just seen you kind of spin around in your chair and then kind of a little bit distracted. So she's making her way over to you. And what do you plan to do, Krista? I put my hand up. Miss, I need to use the washroom, please. Um, <clears throat> all right, give me a standard like test. like leaning and I'll trying look, to like distract her. I'll make it a test to see how urgent and convincing you are to distract her away. Okay. Now, do you have um, any any traits that would help with that? I'm trying to remember what traits that's you have. A great question. I'm bringing up your character sheet. Popular, now. maybe. Popular. You I gain mean, advantage when attempting to convince student. someone of something or otherwise influence them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now, but this can extend to you lying, but if you're actually telling the truth, you get to make a once per session reroll. But you're technically I lying mean, now, but it's, you still get it with I'm, advantage. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so 3d6 test. Because you're such a goody two shoes. Oh my god. So you <laughs> failed with a complication. <laughs> You guys are off to a oh, man. <laughs> Of course, of course I do. <laughs> she's, she looks over and she's like, hmm, real convenient to have to go to the washroom at the same time as your best friend is about to get a scalding. You'll sit right there, miss. And she looks at you, Crystal, with kind of a stern gaze and walks over to Izzy and says, I give a side eye to Izzy. <laughs> and kind of leans forward on the desks, uh, your desk and looks down at your work and says, are you trying to tell me that you need to cheat off someone else's Santa letter, Izzy? No, but um, I forgot if the N has the curly or it doesn't have the curly, and I wanted to ask you, but I didn't want to put my hand up, and yeah. That is no reason to turn... So you're essentially saying you were trying to copy how to do an N off of your neighbor's work? No, I want to turn around to look at you. All right. Do you have any skills with persuasion or convincing? Uh, I also have popular. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you do. All right. A test with the advantage. Let's see if you can bluff your way out of this. There you go. Oh yeah. All right. 
She says, fine, Izzy, fine. This is how you do it. And at the top of your page, she uh, shows you the different styles of cursive ends. And then she goes yep. back <clears throat> and she goes back up to the front and uh, pauses and turns around and is like, Crystal, do you really need to use the washroom? Yes, ma'am. Make it quick. <laughs> she seems to be a bit irritated here today. Okay. <laughs> I get up because I want to make good on this. <laughs> so I, I get up and I go. All right. So you go to the washroom. You come back. Now we're nearing the, um, we're about halfway through the class. At this point, you probably got about half of your letter written. Um, and you get yourself back into the classroom. Peter asks for another word. And it was so simple, kind of like a Ralph Wiggum moment here. And it just breaks the class and too many people in the back start to snicker and laugh. And then one kid, one unknown kid who seems to be throwing his voice in the class, so you're not quite sure where it came from, although you can test later if you want to find out for sure. But you hear someone say, Peter Gumman, more like Peter Dumman. And with that, the class just cracks up even more in throes of overwhelming frustration. P Peter reaches the precipice of his patience. A surge of emotion compels him to channel his anger into a seemingly innocent act. He snaps his pencil with unrestrained force against the paper, the sharp crack echoing through the classroom. Rising abruptly, his facial expression contorted to a blend of anger and humiliation as he starts to leave. However, his exit is unexpectedly thwarted as his foot becomes entangled in the unruly straps of his book bag. Momentum propels him forward, and with a jarring crash, he collapses onto the floor. Laughter erupts as his classmates, like an unwelcoming chorus, amplify the embarrassment etched across his features. As he rises, frustration etched in the flush of his red face, he attempts to regain his composure. Yet misfortune strikes again. His foot snags in the straps once more. A second fall ensues, more disastrous than the first, ending in a painful collision between his mouth and the unyielding surface of an adjacent desk. The air is punctuated by a sickening sound of a tooth dislodging. A moment of stunned silence follows Peter before tears stream down his face. He hastily untangles his foot and storms out of the classroom, leaving behind a tangible atmosphere of discomfort and shock. Miss Doyle raises her tone with you all and says, You should all be ashamed of yourselves! Now you get back to work! And with that, she quickly rushes out of the classroom after Peter. Whew. It was quite a sight to see. I would like you all to make a save test versus stress, as this classroom has been... This whole class setting so far has been pretty stressful, between the teachers catching at least three of you in the act of doing something you shouldn't be doing, plus that what, witnessing what just happened, I would say it might cause a little bit of stress to most of you. Um... So make a 2d6 stress test. Okay. It's a save test against stress, essentially. Is there a plus uh, I'm good. Four? Oh. You guys. Wait, who rolled with this advantage? <laughs> Nobody did. Oh, everybody's... Everybody... So I got everybody's roll. Tyler, Crystal, or Gadget. Yep. Okay. Um... To answer your question, there <coughs> is some droplets of blood, yeah, on the floor, and a little bit that drops out through the door that would, like, drip from his mouth as he was rushing at the door. Okay. As for the stress, um, Crystal, fail with complications. So, Crystal, you take two stress. Gadget rolled double ones, which is, you can't get any worse than the complications, so that's just... Oh that's you two. all rolled ones! That's a two. Uh, two stress for Gadget. Um... Izzy, you succeeded with a complication. Um, I'm going to say you just, unless you can think of anything otherwise, I'm going to say you probably just have an upset stomach since you were so close to it. Maybe a little bit of blood got on your shoe and you got a, you got a kind of a churning stomach or something. Yes. Yeah, as sure. you were so close to the action and you just seen it all front row seat. 
And uh, Tyler, you're good. <laughs> You've seen a lot worse things in hockey. My character's just sitting up, staring at the blood. Uh, so most of the class get back to work. Some of the others don't. They're looking to each other, kind of in a bit of shock. Uh, some people are whispering to each other at their desks. What are you guys doing? Anything? Who said it? You said we might be able to check later? Yeah, if you want to. Um, it's a test with disadvantage unless you have the perceptive ta- trait. I definitely do not. Which I think Crystal Did does. Did someone take perceptive? I think Crystal does. I do, but I'm kind of like staring at the blood. I'm not oh. thinking of that right now. No. no, you definitely it went down so fast you didn't you didn't see who threw his voice. Okay. It was definitely a guy, you know that much, but otherwise no. Returning to the classroom, Peter's presence uh, is immediately noticeable as he bears a gauze in his mouth, a visible testament to the unfortunate incident. Miss Doyle Miss Doyle, with a measured tone, informs the class that Peter's mother is en route to retrieve him. The room hushes in concern as Peter, seemingly unaffected by the injury now, seizes a pencil, a fresh piece of paper, uh, with a determined resolve. In stoic silence, he begins to etch out a new letter, his graphite dancing across the paper. His gaze transforms into a penetrating stare. A silent proclamation of his unspoken frustration directed at everyone in the room. A droplet of blood cascades from his wounded mouth, staining the paper, but he continues to write. And then the school bell rings. With that, everybody slams their books, rushes up. Miss Doyle says, leave your letters here on the table, and everybody go have a better day. What a horrible start to a day this was. And she's clearly frustrated and angry as everyone is now rushing out to get ready to go to their next class. So, you all do the same, I assume? (laughs) Yeah, I guess. School, gotta go to the next class. (laughs) Exactly. Is Peter the first one out, or is he, like, one of the last ones out? Um, he's around the middle, I would say. Okay. I just kind of, like, look towards him as I get my books and I leave. He definitely has a different aura about him. Uh, you've never seen him so angry. He's always just kind of had a more adaptable, kind of generous kind of uh, personality. But now you've never seen him so angry. What do we know about him? Like anything? Like his family? You know nothing about him other than he's a okay. pretty quiet kid, kind of like the loner kid. Um, okay. Doesn't really have many friends. And you do know that he comes from a poor household. Like his clothing okay. is always like under the average and you know not always washed and stuff like that and sometimes he gets bullied for smelling because his clothes wasn't washed and it's, it reeks of B.O. or something like that but you know that kind okay. of thing okay can I be one of the last people out and I just want to like pretend to be like tying up my shoe or whatever or fixing up my books and just make sure no one messes with his letter uh, no he slammed it on the pile and then other people piled theirs on top of his you clearly oh, okay. you clearly see it that it got put in the pile with the teachers okay then I want to catch up with crystal yeah like either before we leave class or like just after we leave the classroom going we're to the next room I want to try and touch base with Peter just to sort of quickly go up no one I've had any association with though like I feel like Tyler's nature was sort of to have him say something uh so go up there like, oh, uh, uh, hey, Peter, that was quite a lick you took there. Uh, how you doing? You should know. You've seen it all will go down. Yeah. That's... Everyone laughing at me. Yeah. And Don't... he starts he starts to pick up his pace. He's trying to outwalk you. Oh, it's it's okay, Pete. It's it, and I feel like he just sort of loses me in the crowd because I'm not really sure what to say. And with that, yeah, he 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 starts power walking to get away from you. And just, yeah. and you can clearly see he's not, he cuts off from the pack because he has to go wait out for the office for his mom to pick him up now. Yeah, because I knew he wasn't going to another class. That's why I wanted to sort of touch base. Up. Okay, so that's what I do and just sort of sigh and move on. All right. So you finish up your next class, which is whatever, math or whatever subject. And then the bell rings and it's recess time. <laughs> so... All right, so it's recess time. 
the lot of you now uh, probably grab your snack and head outside. It is a nice day outside, or are you staying in the school? It's up to you. We're outside. Do we have a place where we usually hang out? Or you, all you tell me. <laughs> like a tree or something? I think we all go outside. Sure. Yeah. You could say there's a fairly large uh, pine tree uh, there at some point. Uh, it's somewhere planted in here. Um, <clears throat> this whole city takes pride in their pine trees since it's the dominant type of tree surrounding the area. Uh, but they have other types of trees, as you can see. But either way, there's one kind of unique larger tree that's your typical hangout spot. Um, you're all probably having your little milk carton and large oatmeal cookie that you got from the cafeteria <laughs> for 25 cents. Um, and uh, yeah. So as you're all loitering there, is there anything now that you're all grouped up and done, not having any teacher supervision? Is there anything you want to talk about or do we move on? Man, I don't know if Miss Doyle knows that we're like 13 now, but like, I don't know if I'm going to be writing letters to Santa much longer, you know? Yeah, and uh, besides, like, you know, what do you have to write a second letter for? Mine was already done. I think it was just more of a busy work and an actual letter I guess so yeah it seems like an easy way to get an A can't you guys say so Peter. so the crisp December air envelops the school playground where you're all standing there chatting and the cold breeze carries whispers of evergreen trees and a distant promise of snow and the soccer field radiates with golden hues of the warm sun, echoes of laughter of students engaged in games and countless conversations. However, as you're all in the middle of your conversation, you get approached by three figures, which... They look like high schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they're all your age. <laughs> oh my god, look at the cheekbones! <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, some of them were sure a little <laughs> sooner than the rest. Most of our okay. alumni go on to be teen models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every shot yeah, from you Where's guys the is... teenage acne? <laughs> I, oh, no, no. This is, this is like a TV show. Everybody's glamorous. <laughs> you get approached by... So, on the left with the curly dark hair, it is Victor Cornwell. In the middle with a... Uh, Bl curly blonde hair is Jimmy Gleason and on the right with the bright <laughs> red hair is Dennis Graf 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 I'm not quite sure how he pronounces it G-R-A-F and they approach the group of the four of you and Dennis the redhead steps up and says uh, hey girls uh, how you both doing busy not bad. How are you doing? Oh. I shoot Izzy a look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you both pick popular. You got this coming. Uh, <laughs> you uh, you shoot her a look, and they're like, busy, cool, cool. Well, I won't keep much of your time here. So Thanks. me, and, so me and the boys, uh, we were wondering if e either of you two had a date for the uh, Christmas party on Saturday. I roll my eyes and I stare at Izzy. <laughs> I don't. Nice, nice. Well, uh, well, I'm just going to say it. The three of us really liked both of you and decided that the only fair thing to do is to ask you as a group and it'd be totally radical to let you pick the two of us that you want to go with. And the odd man out would be okay with that? Yeah. Rather than scrap it out, this is what we decided, right, fellas? And he looks back, and the other two kind of nod. That's very mature. Um, we'll probably have to discuss, and we can get back to you later today or tomorrow, maybe. Okay? <laughs> I, I'm chewing gum, and I crack it really loudly as I stare at all three of them. <laughs> right, they're a little... Take him back. The two in the back are a little bit more like looking at you, Crystal, or like putting off this harsh persona of like get out of my face. Whereas Dennis is I'm totally 13. <laughs> Dennis seems very confident and upfront. That's why he kind of seems like he's the lead man here. Lead boy. And uh 
<laughs> and but he's really digging Izzy here now with the way Izzy's responding. But uh, he, he gives you a nice uh, kind of smile. And all right, we can accept that, right, fellas? All right, we'll wait to hear back from you. All right, all right, we'll be waiting. And they turn and go on, and a uh, little bit of a pep to their step. Seriously, Izzy. Come on, we can't shoot everyone down forever. We're 13. We're practically adults. I don't know. I prefer... <laughs> Just as the other guys depart, with only about five minutes left to your recess, once those cool kids walked away, it looks like this kid, Christopher, he's a kid in your class, he quickly rushes up to the group, primarily talking to the two fellas, although he is saying it to you all as a group. <clears throat> but it seems like it's, he's a little awkward for him to talk to a girl. You're kind of just getting that vibe. Not so much that he's being rude. <laughs> but he says, uh, uh, Hey, hey, fellas, might I have a moment of your time? Sure, Christopher. <laughs> What's on your mind? <laughs> well, well, with uh, Christmas break coming up soon... Uh, we're gonna have a lot of free time, and uh, well, I got I got an early gift this year. It's it's called it's a game here called and he rips out of his book bag a book called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Edition. I and, love he it. and he whips out the book to show all of you, and he's like, and well, yeah, I, I didn't really realize it was supposed to be played with your friends, and well, I I don't really have any friends that uh um well that are available right now. So I'm just trying to find some others who like might be interested in trying it out. Play, sure. Oh, oh, oh. And he looks at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you can play too. Uh, the more the merrier. Oh, what? I'm sorry. If I, if it wasn't meant for. Oh, no, totally. That's okay. It, no, no, it was to it, no, no, it, it, <laughs> totally meant for you. Yeah, all of you, all, all of you, if you want to. Oh. What's it about? Well, you see here, and he takes stands as like his back next to you and starts flicking through the book, and he's like, it's so cool. Like, it, you, you get to make up your own character, and you can be like any of these cool classes right here. And he, as you can see it, ring, the bell starts ringing as time is up for recess. And he's just like, oh, I'll tell you more about it later. But it's really cool, and you get to, you, you guys ever read those like, he's like packing up and walking now, those like uh, adventure books? In the library, where like you choose your own adventure. Oh yeah, those are amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like those except way better. Oh okay, well I'm in totally. Um, yeah, I, I guess. Tyler's into. Cool, 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 okay, cool. Fun. And he looks at you, Izzy. Hey, and Izzy are in. Awesome, that's a full party. And he looks like. It's Christmas Day for him now. Like, his Christmas gift is not wasted. And he seems very excited as he rushes into the school. I might have to second guess this. I'm not a big fan of parties. He didn't hear that. <laughs> He's long gone. <laughs> but, uh... Alright, so you finish up your classes for the day before the final bell rings, and over the crackling PA system you hear the announcement. A reminder to grade 7 students that your final projects and papers are due by tomorrow, and your final grades depend on it. So, they're talking to you specifically. All right, so, the school is out. What do you plan to do? You all know you have a big project to work on for tomorrow, but, I mean, it's up to you what you want to do after school. What's the project? Well, I'll discuss it now. So, each of you must either do an essay or a story for English, or you must do a dedicated and complex science project or you must complete a massive booklet on mathematics. The choice was yours in advance, so you would have already picked this. Uh, I pick essay. Yeah, I'm gonna do an essay. <laughs> Science project. <laughs> a given. <laughs> Knew it. What oh. about the hockey player? What would Tyler do? None of these are strengths. Um... Uh, Let's see. No, your final he... your final paper is usually not phys ed. It needs to be English, science, or math. <laughs> you write an okay. essay on running. <laughs> How it's good for the body. <laughs> uh, 
he'll probably try to do a story. <laughs> nice. I'm trying to think, like, what would Tyler do? He's just like, he's just going to write about hockey. <laughs> An essay on hockey as your final there term you paper. Um, Crystal would offer to help you if you needed help. Well, if you have time. Same thing with you, Izzy. We'll see if you have time or not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So, the basically, when we get, once you get home and say you're focusing on your work, then we're going to make tests. So, uh, we'll see. Oh, God, and the dice rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I love the dice rolls. Ah, oh, they don't like me. <laughs> so, essentially, is there anything else you guys are doing uh, before, like, after school? Are you going to go hang out or do anything? Or are you just going to rush home and get the work on your project? It's up to you. I want to talk to Izzy. What happened at recess? Like... Dennis? Really? Is he? I mean, it's not just Izzy? Dennis. There's also Victor and Jimmy. But I don't know. I mean, are we there? I don't know. I mean, boys are so complicated. Yeah, but they're just gonna, like, take us to the dance and we'll see how it goes. And we don't have to, like, I don't have to, like, do anything, I don't think. Or, like, I don't know. I've never danced before, but it was nice to be asked. I mean, okay. Sure. <sighs> so then you don't like Dennis. Who do you like? Uh, I don't really know. I never really thought about it. I've been so focused on this. <sighs> My dad would kill me. I don't even know if he'd let me. I mean, I'm not gonna okay. tell him. I know. You're my best friend. Okay, if I had to pick. Well, not Dennis. Hmm. Alright, I'll pick Jimmy. <clears throat> I'll say what, really what you know of Jimmy. I'll give you a little bit. Of, you would know a bit of their personality, so I'll give you a little bit of their personality just in case it helped that you might want to base your decision on that. Okay, so, cool. Yes, I want all the information. <laughs> you know Jimmy to be resourceful, diligent, um, but a bit aloof. And okay. uh, Victor to be em empathetic, also diligent, but stubborn. I can go with aloof. Because <laughs> if he doesn't care... And that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing this for you, Izzy, because you want to do this, and I'm not gonna let you go on your own. So you Jimmy, are, it is. You are the best friend. Can we just say that we walk home together, like in the yes. same direction for a while? For sure. You're yes. you're on your skateboard and your bike, and you're pedaling away. Yep. Um, Izzy on her skateboard, and you go for as long as you can until you have to separate. Um, uh, I will point out that that Dennis Izzy, you know him as well. He is very courageous. Uh, he's very confident, as you noticed, yeah, but he tends to be a bit impulsive. <laughs> this is a match made in <laughs> terrible places. <laughs> I guess you go ride together as long as you can, and you break off, and you all head home. Is that fair to say? Or does anyone else have anything they would plan to do? Um, I'll call you later. <laughs> okay, can't wait. Okay, bye. Love you. Bye, love you. <laughs> the girls are love being teenagers again. <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so... Are you all just rushing in the door and getting to work on your project? Uh, or are you going to chill out, watch? Now, I will point out, for every hour of relaxing and doing nothing, which means no homework, but just watching TV or just doing something that you really enjoy would reduce one of your stress points. Uh, also, it might not leave you enough time to get your project done. I think Tyler's going to work on his projects. I feel he's procrastinated it, and like he's only going to start it this night because he's been having trouble figuring out what he's going to write about. <laughs> yeah, this is something I, I you know, building a, a device for science. This is, uh, I, I know it's uh, 
mechanically stre- stressful, but uh, it's not stressful for him. He just wants to go tinker and build. So he's uh, very excited to go home and get started with this. And the girls, are you both getting home and starting your essays? Yeah, the sooner I get my essay done, the sooner I can get out of here and get into things. <laughs> All right. So you both get at it when you get home. Um, so everyone... Actually, oh, not me. Not you. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, so uh, I would assume based on how Crystal is, I would have at least made a good set of notes before today. Um, so when I go into the house... First of all, my parents aren't home, right? Uh, not this early after school, no. What about my little brother? Your little brother is nine years old, <clears throat> and he will be arriving home soon on his school bus. Okay. You always so kind of usually go... got to get home. On some days, you got to get home right after school to pick him up. Some days you don't. So today's one of those okay. days that he'll be arriving in the bus very soon. Okay. So I grab um, a snack for him out of the fridge and I lay it on the counter um, and I write a little note um, hey working on a project please don't interrupt me just have fun do what you normally do here's some snacks and then I'll grab a soda and then I'll go on up and work on my project you're up in your room and you hear the clatter of him coming in dropping his book bag and and then you hear this here, thanks, sis. And then he <laughs> runs off and you hear the chk of the TV turning on and flick, flick, click, click, click of the 13 channels that he's trying to look between um, <laughs> to try to find something to watch. So you know he's home. And uh, yeah, you get to work. So now we're going to make tests. Now, some of you guys might have traits which could help on your tests. You can have a look at your character to see if you have any kind of traits you feel might apply to what you're doing. <laughs> All of my traits apply to what I'm doing. <laughs> I think I have a trait, but I don't think it's going to hinder me. I have a trait. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny, though. You also have uh, unlucky gadgets, so <laughs> exactly three times per day <laughs> I can simply force you to have disadvantage. Uh, yes. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to let the dice decide. I'll make it a 50% chance on whether I make you be unlucky, okay? Sounds good. Whether I use one on you here for your project or not. So if I roll low, you're unlucky. I rolled high, so nope, you're good. All right. Then. Everything's coming up gadget. All right, so <laughs> you would get advantage, a 3d6 test gadget, if you want to roll to see how your science project is coming along. Excellent. So you know how you can make a potato clock? Well, I'm going to make a potato computer. <laughs> I'm going to hook up as many potatoes as I can get. Uh, all of the lamps, uh, batteries, I need copper wire, and I need just everything I can find. I'm just going around the house, taking all of Dad's stuff, because he does weird inventions as well. And I'm just going to start putting things together to see what else I can make with the power of the potato. Or, in this case, a bag of potatoes, which I took, but Mom doesn't know about. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you successfully made it work. You, uh, it hooks up, it gets enough power to light up a couple of whatever you're doing with the circuit boards or the chipsets or whatever. A simple kind of computer. What is the end goal of it? Just to show that it can power... Uh, to show that it can power different things. There's going to be a lot of different circuits so that I'll be able to turn on a light with one thing and then turn off the light and be able to like bin a, something in another thing and just kind of power a little train circle thing in another thing. Uh, just little teeny models, of course, you know, the lower gauge trains, because that's what I'm into. And um, yeah, just all kinds of the little tinkery things that you have around the house. Okay. And you're all double complications. Well, really, you can only be complicated once, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to say in doing so, at some point during this, you had to go over to the wall outlet and plug in one of your the little devices to see how much wattage is coming out to test before you did it with the potato. Basically, doing some kind of a little electrical test, but you had to use the sockets in the house um, yeah. as your, with your little uh, gauge meter, and when you did, 
you accidentally redirected the current, or whatever electrical term you want to use, and poof, you pop a fuse, <laughs> and all the lights in the house just go dark. <laughs> and just everybody who's in the house just hears, I can fix it! <laughs> <laughs> but, but your project is excellent. <laughs> Um, okay, who wants to go next? Him. Who wants to go next? I'm afraid. You're afraid? Well, we'll go with you since just, you're afraid. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Alright, so do you have anything that would add to writing essays? I don't. Uh, that's a great question. Let me see. Are you schooled or something like this? I am schooled. Yeah. Schooled in science? You didn't pick science. Oh, you didn't pick, oh, you didn't oh pick right. Science. I picked. Do you want to change your mind? Can I write a science paper? Or does Ooh, it need to be a project? You trying to, no, you can write an essay on some kind of scientific topic. I'll allow it, yeah. Uh, biology yeah, is the game. Yeah, I'll pick something in biology. Um, all right, so you would get advantage on this roll. Okay. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> all right, we'll get back to you in a minute. No, no, I'm, thinking, no. I'm thinking of Jimmy. <laughs> You're daydreaming. It's, it's you do a couple strokes. locks. And you look out your window. Running your hands through his blonde locks. <laughs> C plus J. Oh. <laughs> She's just drawing the heart with all the lines. <laughs> Making one of those paper things where you're like, does he love me? Or whatever it is where you flick your hands. You know what I'm does talking about? like me? Oh yeah, the cootie catcher. Is that what it's called? Oh my. Cootie yeah. Catcher? Yeah, they were big. Um, <laughs> Dying. Tyler, we'll hop to you, I guess. Okay. Uh, so Tyler, uh, he is going to. He had a long, hard thought about what he could write. Though I remember someone saying, "Write what you know." When he knows hockey, so he's going to try and write about like you know uh, one of his favorite hockey players, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Uh, so, but, in terms of my test here, I think I'll be doing this with disadvantage. <laughs> this feels like a situation for dim wit, just I, because specifically what it says is you suffer disadvantage in any test related to thinking about things or being clever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it says, like, you can never be schooled, which means... It, yeah, it, I can never be schooled. So it doesn't mean my character's dumb, it's just that, like, he's really struggling with this. So I'm going to roll this okay. with disadvantage. Even when you're schooled, you can still roll poor. <laughs> oh, I succeeded! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but he's writing about what he knows. And so, love it. <laughs> so between a combination of like reading uh, him, reading up on him from like my issues of Sports Illustrated and going through my hockey cards, I managed to compile a decent enough essay about Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> nice. I <laughs> love it. All right, Izzy. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right. <laughs> And I'm writing an English paper that I think that my parents will be proud of. So, I guess more in their wheelhouse than my own. And I don't have anything to help me. No, I just looked at your skills. No, I don't think so. Um, so that is disadvantage? No, or it's a straight roll. roll. 2d6. It's straight, yeah. Okay. Yeah! Nice! You did it! <laughs> Alright, so we hit about... Um, say about 8 p.m. here now and uh, the sun is going down it's getting dark out all three of you finish up your assignments crystal it you see now that your night lights kick in because it's getting dark uh, out and you didn't turn the light on in your room and you have to get up and flick it on and then you realize oh crap it's getting late and you're only like halfway through your paper Hey, it's going to be an all nighter. <laughs> <laughs> so you were struggling. So, what's your plan? To try to uh, rush through it and get a good night's sleep, or do you want to continue to work on it and make another test? I'm going to work on it and do another test. All right, you can roll with advantage again. Yeah, your character seems like a bit of a perfectionist, so... She <laughs> is a perfectionist, and the fact that she didn't get it on the first try, it's irritating her. Oh my gosh. Fail oh no! <laughs> Failure <laughs> with complications! I cannot roll! <laughs> In my mind, you're throwing twice. away better papers oh, than I've written. Five or six. 
I right. cannot like the dice never like me. Like it's funny because <laughs> you should have got like the best like merc out of all of us, and yeah. but it's me. <laughs> okay, so I always roll like this. <laughs> okay, do you have any ideas on what would cause Crystal to be pushing it past her bedtime? Her parents told her to go to sleep. But you stay up late, keeping a nightlight on, still scribbling away past 11, 12, hits around 11, almost coming up on 12 o'clock at night. And you're, at this point, I want you to make a stress test at disadvantage. Okay. So, so it's just 1d6. 1d6? Yeah. Okay. Well, you passed. So oh, you're nice. holding it together a bit, but... I do good under pressure. <laughs> but you're still... Uh, it's up to you how you're feeling, but you're it's about 12 o'clock, and you're not confident in what you've written. You've actually erased it so many times and started over, and you're like... Yeah, you, it, whether it's boys Can on I... your mind, or the excitement of Christmas, or what, but you're just having trouble focusing. It's like midnight? Mm-hmm. What time do I have to be up in the morning? Like seven. Yeah, to be to school for like eight. So if you push it any further, you will have like essentially a point of exhaustion tomorrow, um, which will factor in. I'm gonna push it. Ooh. Okay, roll three d six. Let let it be worth it. Come on. Failure. No. You push it till three o'clock. Um, oh my god! I'm I'm calling it obviously. And I at this to. point, you fall asleep, <laughs> writing. Oh, yeah! You just literally into bed with your nightlight. You fall asleep. And, Nine uh, dice, and you couldn't roll five or six. <laughs> <laughs> You've met me. Poor Mel. I know. <laughs> You've at met least you me. Stress test with disadvantage. Of oh, oh my god! Man. Okay. okay. It's, it, well, is it, is. it is what it, it is. It is what it is. No going back. Yeah. All nope. right. <clears throat> just you know it's okay i'm allowed to have one bad paper <laughs> it, That's oh, going for to your final, final term paper <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> so with most of your grade my all parents right. are going to kill me <laughs> so as you all stir from your slumber your radio kicks in waking you uh for the morning alarm that you set for school it crackles to life as you hear Good morning, rad folks! This is your hyper-happy DJ Mixmaster Max coming at you with the most tubular news ever! Guess what? Overnight snowpocalypse alert! Overnight, a freak storm came out of nowhere! Nobody predicted this thing! And you know what that means! Hold on to your leg warmers because all schools are officially cancelled for the day! Oh my god, that's amazing! It gets even better for all you fly folks living out in Crestview Hills! I'm about to drop some mega news on you so get stoked, because today the town just unveiled a brand new hotspot for all your winter enthusiasts. They've rolled out a designated area for sliding, tubing, and crazy carpeting over none other than Jamboree Hill. That place is going to be booming today, and boy is that hill a big one. Luckily, they offer a sled taxi service from the bottom to the top throughout the day. You just need to bring them one dollar and you're set for getting back to the top of that hill all day long for that one low price. I got a feeling today is going to be totally radical, so stay tuned for the latest tracks and keep riding that snow wave, my righteous friends. <laughs> and you look out your window to see a br the bright white that everyone wants to see this time of year. I go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Uh... <laughs> That of the luck of it all <laughs> for Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Still uh, in my clothes from yesterday. Great. I just pulled the covers up over my head. <laughs> uh, do any of us get our, any stress back for the sleep? Or? Yeah. So with a full night's sleep, um, you would regain all of your uh, stress and hit points. We However, know, didn't get a full night's sleep. <laughs> so nope. um, for so. So you only got four hours of sleep, right? As you crashed yeah. at three in the morning. Um, yeah. So technically you would get four of your stress points back, um, but you would need at least another two to three hours to feel like normal. 
right? Because you only have four so, hours sleep as a 13 year old. <laughs> yeah, should I leave my stress then still at the four out of six? Well, you said you're going back to sleep, right? I was, yeah, my, my character is so, yeah. That's All right, so if you're going to go back to sleep for a couple more hours, at least two more hours, then that'll be considered a night's nice rest and you'll get it all back. But if you were to stay up okay. now, I would have probably only give half of it back. <laughs> no, she's going to sleep and then plan, wake up, get something to eat, work on her paper, unless things happen. <laughs> <laughs> things will happen. <laughs> things will happen. Uh, what was the name of the uh, hill where uh, the designated area? It's Jamboree Hill. It's this big hill that they've been working on to turn into a place. And now that you got your first snowfall of the year, the town is kind of making a big deal of it. Uh, kind of like a grand opening of that sliding hill. So that's why it hit the radio waves. All right. I don't know. We're putting on this like snow clubs. <laughs> oh, it's snowing. Wow. All right. So we're going to get to meet the families now. <laughs> Starting with, okay. we'll start with Gadget. Okay, so you can describe to, mo to me what you do in the morning when you wake up and hear that. And uh... all right, so uh, we, uh, well, I, I would live. I think we discussed this earlier, but I, I'm neighbors with uh, Tyler, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I would have thought some point long ago in our. Uh, younger years we uh we actually would have set up the string telephone between our, our rooms i would have done that somehow uh and as soon as i hear this on the radio i would just be talking into the string whether or not he's listening i don't know you might not even be awake yet I said it's a snow day tyler i'm gonna go down and get some breakfast come over if you want we can go sliding and then i'm yeah. just gonna go on downstairs <laughs> uh and uh because i know that there's most likely going to be uh people milling around in the kitchen mm -hmm. and we have a very much a Rube Goldberg machine type setup uh, where we kind of have to flick a switch and you know eggs will crack in the pan and toast will be put down and a ball will roll and a little chicken in the cup and the whole thing around the kitchen and things like that are happening in my house all the time uh, so I'm, I'm setting up uh, for some breakfast and I'm just going to come down and uh yeah, so right. is anybody around when I come downstairs? Yes, so when you come down, your father, Earl, is sitting there uh, at the table with a cup of coffee, a newspaper in his hand, straightens up his tie a little bit, flicking through the paper, and, oh, hey, hey, hey good morning, son. Uh, hey, Dad, you I'm going to make some breakfast and go sledding with Tyler. Uh, he might come over as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm starting to clear the roads now uh me and your mother uh, still gotta still gotta go in uh to work so you're gonna be on your own uh but you'll be all right right oh it's totally rad dad we'll be fine yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and you can see him he's kind of like a little bit absent mind like his mind is always on something else like as you're talking to him he's probably thinking about his different projects you know he is the science teacher of your school um yeah, so <laughs> he's the science teacher at Crestview High, Crestview Hills oh, School. Oh, neat. Um, so that's what he does, uh, but he still has to go in, even though the school is canceled. They uh, have to go in kind of for doing up the final reports and getting certain things prepped for the upcoming final exams and that kind of thing. So they didn't want to risk it with the kids getting there, but the teachers were told that they can get in, they're supposed to get in, and your dad's a bit of a keener. So he's just waiting for the plows to go down the road, uh, and then he's gonna have to head on into work. Your mother, Megan, <laughs> uh, she is comes into the kitchen with her curling iron, still trying to curl and straighten her hair, half dressed, you know, like still got a bit of her nightgown on or whatever. And she's just coming in to be like, Earl, are you making me some tea? Oh, bless you. Bless you, Earl. And goes over, grabs the tea, mixes it, um, and uses your funky contraption that you've made to put a tea bag <laughs> into her uh, teacup. She's used to your contraption. And uh, she looks at you and says, uh, now you stay warm if you're going out anywhere today, all right? Yeah, no problem, Mom. I don't want you coming down with anything. 
Uh, and uh, if if you guys can, someone should probably pick up some more uh, fuses uh, for the basement. I had to use um, uh, a couple last night uh, that you might have seen or not seen. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh, look, the eggs are done. And she uh, <laughs> she seems like a, she just gives you this like sh- she shakes her head, just being like oh, typical. But you look over at Earl when you say that, and a grin comes on his face. He's like <laughs> kind of more of a proud of you moment. Um, He's proud of your tinkering. However, the next person to enter the room, not so much proud of you. As you say that, your older 16-year-old sister Valerie storms in. It's like, yes, I was in the middle of watching a good show. You wouldn't believe what? I was going to say, Oprah was Oprah on the air in 83? (laughs) Probably. Uh, So she was uh, like, uh, probably... Uh, I don't know if my Google 16 year old it. sister will be watching it. Yeah, uh, I was trying to think what other time Donahue. Jerry Springer. <laughs> no, that was like the 90s. No, that Ma- definitely wasn't. Matlock? <laughs> uh, but, anyways. Matlock. She comes oh, in and basically okay. says, Yeah, I interrupted my show and I missed the last 15 minutes of it, you little jerk. And she, like, kind of like just taps you in the back of the head and goes over and. She starts trying to make breakfast, and she's and then she's clearly befuddled with this stupid machine that you keep making modifications to. And she's just like, "All I want is a freaking piece of toast." No and problem. Like, just gotta click this this le- lever valve uh, right here. I'll do it for you. No problem. <sighs> then she like goes over and grabs some OJ out of the fridge and kind of slams the door. She's like clearly impatient, and you are the annoying little brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tracks. <laughs> and no Oprah started in 86. <laughs> All right. Enter generic show. I gotta, I gotta start to, before next game, I actually look up all the shows that were on. I know. Dyn- I'm a Dynasty, Dynasty, maybe. Here so I can get my references correct. It's like Magnum P.I. Yeah, Dynasty was a big soap opera back then. So if you think Dynasty is probably what it would have yeah. been. Up next, moving on to. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention your mother, you know. <laughs> Uh, Gadget, your mother works as a supervisor at the clothing store in the Crossroads Mall. So she has to wait and drive on the highway and head on out to the cross big Crossroads Mall. That's like between kind of here and the big major city that I mentioned at the beginning. So she's got to head out there. That's what she does. Um, now we'll move on to Izzy. Izzy, how would you like to describe your morning? Anything in particular? Uh, Izzy kind of wakes up like uh, a tornado. Um, as soon as her eyes are open, her feet are on the floor. She's grabbing some clothes, like picking an outfit, getting ready, like getting her hair all done. Uh, and sort of makes her way downstairs to eat or take food that's already there if it's there. All right. So as you head down uh, stairs, you do see your mother. First off, she is fully dressed up and ready to go to work. You know your mother, Karis. She is a mortgage broker at a bank in Sugarbush. So that's the full city. She has to drive all the way up to the city. Uh, That's one reason why you're left home a lot. Uh, She has an important job. She's the main breadwinner of the family. And uh, yeah, she's there already, fully ready, just in a rush to be getting out the door. And she says, uh, Izzy, uh, no school today, I am assuming. Yeah, snow shut it all down. Mama, you look beautiful. Oh, so do you, child. And she comes up and uh, kind of takes off your ball cap and kisses you on top of the head and then slides your ball cap on again. Um, <laughs> you know, you kind of have a different style than your mother. Your mother's very casual, business casual, I should say, uh, even when she's not working at, a, at her bank. But uh, yeah, you are you seem to be more of uh, punk clothing. <laughs> but you know what? She doesn't mind. Uh, she loves you all the same. And as she's rushing around getting ready for work, um, getting basically trying to rush out the door because the bank's open early, uh, your father is out on the couch watching TV. His morning cup of coffee. <clears throat> Your father, Flinton, just uh, looks out at you and he's just like, yeah, I got two good-looking girls, that's for sure. 
And he puts his feet up, <laughs> kicks him up, and he's sitting back on the couch, flicking through the channels. <laughs> Dad, but I don't actually mean it. I love it. <laughs> and you know your dad uh, to be... He is the owner of his own car wash business here in town. Then we have your 17-year-old brother, Daryl, who I'm basically going to show you the picture, but he's not here. He's sleeping in because he's 17 years old and school just canceled for the day. Um, so he's technically not around right now. And because there's no way he would get up this early. <clears throat> And last but not least is your eight-year-old younger daughter, or, or sorry, daughter. Younger, daughter. Eight, yikes. <laughs> yikes. Uh, your eight-year-old sister, uh, Serena. And she comes down with her PJs on, like rubbing her eyes and be like, I'm hungry. I'm so Fruit Loops. Hey, Smidge. Hey. <laughs> And she stumbles over and uh, is like, somebody get me some cereal. I'll like get the stuff for her as as uh, parents kind of walk around. We're like, um, so I was thinking that maybe I could head to like Jamboree Hill sometime later today. And um, is that fine? You're asking which parent? Both of them? Uh... I'm going to go with mom, because I think she's busy, and I think she's just going to be like, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> All right, so you catch her out in the porch as she's, like, heading out the door, putting her jacket on. Um, <clears throat> she's like, what? Oh, uh, what, what's, what, why? What's happening there? Um, they've got, like, a sledding hill done up there, and um, if you want me to, to take Serena, they'll, like, take her sled up and down the hill for, like, a dollar. Ah, uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not having her. I want you to go test it out first. Make sure it's all safe for uh, Serena. Serena's going to stay home with her father. I think she's coming down with something anyways. Oh. Okay, well, yeah, I can absolutely test it out. I will bring you back my utmost opinions when you're home. Yeah, yeah, let me know if it's a safe environment for, uh, for her and yourself as well. And now, you have literally just gotten over your last grounding okay you've been grounded for how long now <laughs> two weeks ma'am so i trust with a day off from school out on your own you're going to do what any other kid would do at your age just have fun and not get into trouble right it's true and i finished my project last night it was all ready for school today it wasn't gonna be late and she looks at her watch. Oh, I gotta go. That's good. That's good. She just gives you another kiss on the cheek and rushes out the door and tries not to slip down the slippery stairs. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, you just hear chuckles coming from the living room as your father is just watching TV and going to stay home with Serena. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else before I hop over to whoever's next? Uh, I am going to just sort of get in some kind of warm, but definitely not quite totally winter appropriate clothing and grab my sled and like, go. I've got things to do. <laughs> We're going to hop over to the Westcots. Um, all right, Tyler, you wake up. Snow yeah, day. Yeah, so like, uh, Tyler's an early riser, so he's bright and early awake when he gets the message from uh, Gadget. So he's sort of like getting on his gear and that and getting ready to sort of head out. Um, so like going downstairs and head out the door. Um, who do I run into? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you have your father, Tim. <laughs> 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 All right. And your mother, Joan. Your father, Tim. You know that he is a manager at the local community center. It's a building that has a community center and a pool and does a lot of like recreational activities and he's a manager over there. Your mother, Joan, you know that she works a simple job on the newspaper assembly line here in town. Um, 
So, as you wake up, he is kind of just still in his underwear, kind of got a beater shirt on, kicking back in a nice rocking chair, looking out at the snow and smoking a cigarette. And with that, you see your mother, Joan, is making him breakfast in the kitchen. Not much words are being said. Yeah, like, uh, while, like, Tyler's sort of, like, excited getting down the stairs, like, as he sort of, like, sees that, his pace just sort of slows down a bit as he just sort of, like, tries to sort of, like, skirt past the kitchen just to get out to the main door. Um, and as you, are you trying to sneak past? You can roll a sneak test. Sure. I have nothing to sort of like add to that, so let's just do a straight test. Uh, ooh! Double, double one! Critical <laughs> fail. Uh, so, uh, yeah. As you're trying to sneak past, you accidentally s slip by and your elbow hits the corner of the cupboard, uh, or like the, the countertop, I should say, where it spins the glass dish that is holding all the tea bags. It kind of spins out of control and smashes on the floor. And with that, um, she looks over at you and she's like, ah, oh, let's have just big sigh as she like clearly sees you trying to sneak out. And uh, you hear your father say, what the hell is that? Is that something I'm going to have to pay for? And he, you hear the rocking chair as he gets up out of it, and he's like stomping his way out into the kitchen. Uh, uh, sorry, Mom. I'll, I'll clean it up. Oh, it was you. You better clean it up. And you're going to pay for that, too. How much was that? That's at least $5. I better see $5 on this table by this afternoon, boy. You got to pay for your mistakes. Okay. Yeah. And he just uh, heads back out into the living room, opens up a window, and he just starts rocking back and forth having a smoke. Would you hurry up with that breakfast? And he's just grumbling under his breath. So you're going to clean up the mess? Yeah, I'll take a bit of time to sort of like clean up the mess and that and just sort of like put the glass in the garbage and that. Just sort of like uh, tells me, I was like, um, I'm, I'm going to head out uh, to... Uh, uh, over gadgets. Uh, I'll be back later on. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have five dollars? Because I think he was kind of serious. <sighs> yeah, I, I got some there. Uh, don't worry. Good, good. Okay, okay. All right, you be safe now. She kind of gives you a kiss on the head. Okay. Love you, Mom. So you put, just sort of like put out the rest of my stuff and just sort of like rush out. Not get a breakfast there. I plan to be over at like uh, uh, gadgets. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, not quite the lovely household that the others have, um, but it is what it is. And this is the place that you call home, or maybe you don't call it home. Uh, but either way, now um, we'll hop back to. Uh, gadget as Tyler comes over to your house I guess you get a do you knock on the door or do you just go in <laughs> I would say he just goes in and out yeah I think I just sort of go away and sort of like as I'm there like sort of like see his mom there she's still around like oh hey Mrs. Whitaker oh yeah hey, she just oh hey just like normal routine to see you coming around <laughs> she's like you can grab something out of the fridge if you want uh, thanks. I already got breakfast going for him, Mom. Oh. Uh, it, it'll be ready in a minute. And there's something is smoking, I'm sure, from one of the, <laughs> the things. Uh, I, I got this. Uh, watch out for Val. Uh, she's, in, she's in a bit of a mood. I kind of interrupted her show last night. Um, the little power <laughs> outage. But uh, no problem. Hey, I've been working on, uh, on my toboggan. Uh, I think I've made some improvements to it uh, to make it go faster than it's ever gone before. I can't wait to show you. Oh, even faster? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Modifications on the, on the toboggan. Can't wait to see them. All right. So, um, you two sit down and eat your breakfast. Um, do you feel like you need to roll a test gadget for how good you are making breakfast, or do you have a pretty good mastered at this point with your contraption? It's it's not so much that it, like the contraption works. 
but if I forget to like pull out the egg, forget the toast, it's, it's likely to burn, which could happen. I can get a little scattered minded. Especially when Tyler comes over. Yeah, because you know, I can talk to. Uh, so just make, yeah, a, make yeah. a standard test for me, and we'll just see if uh, you're, how well your breakfast is. Oh, it's good. Hey, got it this time. You this time yeah, it nice. came out perfect. Everything lined up. <laughs> the drinking bird tapped at the right time in order to. Uh, yep, you know. two eggs cracked, no shells went in the pan. It was, uh, exactly. That little egg beater came on on time. Like, oh, it's it's a whole thing. So you're munching. nothing shorted out, nothing burned. It's all good. <laughs> and you're munching on your breakfast, Izzy. You said you rushed out the door. Um, so where were you heading? I definitely want to get a lay of this hill and. Um, probably after I go take a look at that, I might walk over to Crystal's place and see what she's doing. But she's usually like on the. She's usually doing things before I'm doing things, and I haven't heard from her this morning. So. <laughs> All right. So um, right now it'll be too hard to take a skateboard anywhere. So you're walking. <laughs> I'm walking because the roads aren't fully plowed yet, um, in many areas. So. Uh, you're going to try to walk to the hill. Now, I will say it's about a 30-minute walk to the hill, whereas it's only probably 10 minutes to Crystal's house. The hill is on the outskirts of the town because it's like a hill that an end of town ends, right? So Maybe I'll go to Crystal's first then. Do I have some sort of sled, like crazy carpet, like top of a garbage can, something? <laughs> uh... Yeah, normally you're, you guys have to roll for this stuff, but I'll say you all have at least one wintry sliding item each. I'll give you that. So it's up to you what it is. Got one of those saucer things with the weird hand brakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so you're going to head over to Crystal's house? Yeah. All right. So you head over to Crystal's. Uh, I assume you knock on the door. Oh, absolutely. Like, knock and then step three steps back and, like, stand nicely. All right. And, oh, you just hear the pitter-patter of feet. And then the curtain pushes back. And you see... Nine-year-old... Oh. Nine-year-old William... Izzy! <laughs> unlocks the door, opens it. Hey, you're here early? Yeah, I mean, there's no school today. How you doing? Oh, excellent. No school. How do you think I'm doing? The best day. We had a project due today, and I'm so happy. Is your sister out? Uh, nope. I don't oh. think so. Okay. No, come in. You can go up in her room. I'm just watching. You Spider-Man, that old 70s oh, Spider-Man. Oh, yes. This early was actually Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, he's like, yeah, I'm just watching Spider-Man. And it's like... <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, now in color, you know, uh, <laughs> and he, he rushes back over <laughs> and you can see he's got a big bowl of uh, some kind of Count Chocula cereal, Pac-Man cereal or something, and uh, he's munching down on it, and yeah, you have to take off all your winter gear, I guess, and head on up into Crystal's room. Yeah, um, if her parents are there or anything, I'll stop and like wave or say good morning. Yeah, um, you don't see him yet. But you do so hear commotion, like, in their room. Oh, okay. We're almost. <laughs> I just want to go up and, like, tap, tap, tap on her door. Uh, now, Crystal, I... you have, even though you're very tired, you have the perceptive trait, which says even works while you're asleep, so you definitely will hear, wake up and hear it. <laughs> okay. All right, so I kind of throw the covers off, scrub my hands over my face, pull my hair back, go to the door. Yeah. Expecting to see my brother or my mother. Good morning. Oh, hey, come on in. Hey, doing? Sorry, um, I closed the bedroom door. No, nah, yeah. I have siblings too. Uh, I, I just I couldn't write my paper last night. I was up so late. I just couldn't do it. I don't know. And anyway. I heard school was closed, so I just slept a little bit more. I need to finish this paper. You still tired? I'm feeling better now, but I just... I don't know. I don't know, Izzy. I have to get this paper done. What are you doing? 
Well, I don't know if you heard on the radio this morning, but they've got like a sliding hill that they're doing up, or they did up for us. And I think yeah. it'll be a lot of fun. Everybody's going to be there. Um, yeah, I think, and I, I kind of glanced towards the desk where you can see like paper and pencils and like erasers. Can I help I'll work you on with it? Later. it? Uh, maybe. When did you want to, like, we can do it after, we can go to the hill now. I mean, it's absolutely do. morning, so we can, like, show up late, and that will be, like, fashionably late. Okay, cool. Let me just, uh, brush my teeth. Um, do you want something to eat? Drink? I have breakfast at my house, but maybe just a glass of water. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, hold on. So, uh, I'm going to change, brush my hair, brush my teeth, run downstairs, grab a glass of orange juice for the two of us. And when you do. And like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now when you do, your father, <laughs> Gary, <laughs> <laughs> who you know is currently running for the May upcoming mayor election, he has a job with the government, involved in politics, uh, he's there getting his uh, suit on. Uh, or he's got a suit on and he's just uh, getting also getting ready to go out the door and he's just like oh uh, Crystal uh, you've finally awakened you should have been up before now don't you think uh yeah it was I'm trying to write a paper dad love you I'll go over and I kiss him on the cheek alright straight A's do you right? have your coffee straight A's you got it do you have your coffee I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'll be gone all day. You, uh, you, you be good now. Uh, who, who came here this morning? I see some boots out there. And oh, Izzy. Um, oh. we're just gonna do a couple things for school, and then uh, Iz, we're gonna head up to Iz, the, the ski hill. You can just see his like expression change a little bit. Okay. Uh, don't let the uh, don't the two of you get in any trouble. Clearly it's indicating okay, that uh, he uh, thinks that Izzy's a bit of a troublemaker. It's She's... okay, Dad. It's fine. Everything's okay. Go to work. Have a good day. Drive safe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll with see that, you for supper. Yeah. Uh, maybe depends how the day goes. I do have a luncheon, and then followed by a. And he's like <laughs> mumbling to himself <laughs> as he goes out the door. Okay, Dad. Bye. Drive safe. I was like, kind of like, <laughs> usher him out the door. <laughs> All right. And as you go up and you bring your food back to your bedroom, uh, you do walk by your parents' bedroom and the door is now open. And inside, you see your mother is in the mirror with all of whatever ladies use to beautify themselves in the 80s getting herself totally done up for work. You know your mother. She is a secretary for a real estate agency in Sugarbush. So she has to drive all the way up to the city, but, and you know she is a stunningly beautiful woman. And uh, yeah, and other than that, she doesn't really notice you. She's just in her curling her hair, straightening it as you just go by with your <laughs> breakfast. Can I stop yeah. before I go by? So I just stand there with my, with the, my hands holding two glasses of orange juice. Dad just left, Mom. Oh, he did? Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty... Roads are pretty slick out there. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my uh, co-worker is going to pick me up soon. Uh, he's got uh, a big truck. It'll be all right. I should be fine. Dad could have driven me. No, no, he had somewhere to be in a rush, as always. All right, well, I'll see you later, I guess. Yeah, of course. Um, I'll probably bring something home for supper. I'm not sure what yet. Any okay. suggestions? Pizza? <laughs> Pizza. Uh, sure, sure. Okay, well, tell your friend to drive safe. Oh. See you later. Uh, of course. You have a great day. Um, are you just 
going to stay home out of the cold? Uh, no. Izzy's hair, school's closed. I got to finish up a paper for school. And then we're probably going to go head out to the ski hill. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, tell I me can all... take William with me. Tell me all about it. Um, no, William. Uh, William is going over to your cousin's house. Yeah, I'll tell you all about it when I see you for supper. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you when you get home for supper. Okay, bye. And I leave. All right. So you head back in the <laughs> room. <laughs> now everyone has a very fishing. different interactions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everyone has different families and different reasons. Uh, so now everyone has met the family. So you're back in the room with Izzy. Um, and all right. So what do you guys want to do? You guys have a lot more you want to RP or should I do a bit of a jump here since you're all heading to the hill or what? I think we're good to go to the hill unless anyone has anything else. I don't know if you need me to make a roll on my paper. I'll probably just work on it a little bit before we head out. You're going to work on it really? in the yeah, morning? Yeah. Not I am, I'm trying to get this done. Well, Izzy's here. We have the morning. All I right. think that's what Izzy said. We try to work on it and then we'll leave. All right. So you can roll with advantage and it's focused, which means you just need a four plus because she is Izzy is helping you. Oh, my God. I'm afraid I to roll. Watch. It's going to be like fail. all twos and threes. Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh, yay. Yeah. I knocked it out of her. I needed my BFF. Well, with Izzy keeping you focused and probably anxious, I'm betting, to get out of this room and get out and have some fun, <laughs> um, you correct, you had a lot of it already done. It's just you go over it and you come across all the sp- mistakes and find ways to improve it. And now, thanks to the snowstorm, otherwise, you felt that you would have gotten one of the lowest marks you've ever received. Um, Dad would have been so disappointed. Oh, was it- wasn't Crystal the one offering to help other people with their paper? I sure was. <laughs> I am confident in my skills, not my dice. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so you all finished that up, luckily enough. Um, and you all make your way to eventually get to Jamboree <coughs> Hill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, as you approach Jamboree Hill, the vibrant sounds of 80s tunes fill the air, echoing from boomboxes scattered around the snowy expanse. You witness a lively scene as kids and teens zip down the massive hill on sleds, crazy carpets, and tubes, their laughter harmonizing with the crunch of snow underfoot. The hill, enveloped by a thick forest of majestic pine trees, offers a breathtaking view of a long creek winding far down below the valley or down into the valley. The wintry landscape transformed into a nostalgic haven of frosty fun and camaraderie. You arrive, it's a massive hill. There's kids running around everywhere. People, some people are out skiing, tubing, all kinds of stuff. And I'm assuming that Gadget and Tyler are already here. We would have made our way there right after breakfast, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you probably went up and down the hill a few times, truck testing it. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. Exactly. (laughs) I was going to throw you a gadget. What did you show up with here today? All right. So, you know the traditional toboggan with the rounded end made of wood? Uh, So, first of all, I took Dad's car wax and and did the bottom of it. And then I sprayed the bottom with cooking spray. Uh, The loopy rounded end, I fitted with an old gas tank that I filled with water for extra weight. And I've added some uh, kind of like a, an old crazy carpet type material around the front of the, the rounded end so that it comes up a bit more, makes it more aerodynamic. So the thing should be super heavy in the front, very bobsled-esque uh, with a few little siding plastic pieces put along the side just to make it more wind resistant. <laughs> nice. I'm oh. trying to break the all-time speed record for this hill. All right, I want you to make a test. Ooh, I think you get advantage on most of these gadgeteering type tests. Um, I'm not, well, yeah, uh, I got my Quartermaster for finding stuff, MacGyver for 
making lots of one use item things. This isn't one use item. I'm going to assume this is your thing, so you can roll with advantage to see how well it held up being transported 30 minutes across here and get here, uh, and also how well constructed it is. It's your first time really testing it out since the new modifications. Exactly. It hasn't snowed yet. I haven't had a chance to test it. All right. Failure <laughs> with complications. <laughs> so, um, the two of that can fit two people, right? Oh, yes. All right. So, you and Tyler get to the hill early. You hop in it. Tyler, I assume you're amazed by the feat oh, of engineering. Oh, cannot wait. He is just like rubbing his hands together. Cannot wait to try this out. So, um, Gadget, as you both get in there and you pick the steepest hill and you're all <laughs> seeing what can we get out of this thing. You start going down the hill, just fresh powder where no one else has been. Uh, all right. Quickly, it's going. Oh, and is it going fast? Too fast. As you come across, it goes from powder into a beaten track of what looks like where a skidoo would have went up and down multiple times. In doing so, it made it bumpy enough for the change of terrain where... I'm gonna get you to roll uh, at disadvantage uh, to see if you can maintain control of this as you. <laughs> this. I forgot to put in steering. <laughs> okay, let's just see. I'm just seeing what I got here first. See if I have anything. Hey. Nope, I landed. <laughs> so you both okay. get, you hit this terrain, and it's. You got all you can do with your steering. If you didn't make steering, I was going to make get you guys to roll tests to see if you how far and <laughs> you flew out of this thing <laughs> and how whether you're lucky or not to go over a cliff or not. Um, so you using your steering and making a couple of quick second adjustments at the last second, you're able to regain composure as you're rocking left to right and you get a bit of air and you slam down hard and. Um, Tyler, yeah, you're holding on at the edge. Uh, yeah, if you would have failed, that would have got ugly, and there could have been some heavy damage involved. <laughs> but you do it, and you make it down to the bottom of the hill. Now, I also will get you to roll a luck test for me, Gadget. 2d6, see how lucky you are. <laughs> Ooh! Lucky. I can't have lucky with complication again. Um, so... I think with luck tests, I'm just gonna either get them or you don't. So, you got it. <clears throat> um, so, you're lucky enough that after you regain control, it comes to an eventual stop. You don't bang into a tree or fly off a cliff. Oh, I think that was successful. How yeah, fast that did we was, get that was great. Oh, let's <laughs> do it again. Did you time that? I was supposed to do something? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have a watch. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, no. Um, I think that was that was a success. We should we should definitely do that again. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Are you both going to pay the one dollar so that? Oh yeah, uh, I'll pay it. That's no problem. All right. So for one dollar for each of you, there is a skidoo that goes from the very bottom of the mountain and drives all the way up with a big sleigh on the back that all the kids can hop into back. There's multiple sleighs attached, and they pull it to the top. Because walking up this would be <laughs> brutal. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I'll pay a dollar as well. All right, so you do that a few multiple times, and probably up by your second or third attempt down, or more so than that, probably your fourth or fifth attempt going down. Uh, when you get back to the top, you notice Crystal and Izzy shows up. Huh. Wondering where you girls were at. I just had some last-second stuff to do, you know. I like wave my round um, saucer at them. Like, how's the hill? Oh, it's amazing. Oh. Super yeah, fast. You gotta today. try it. Oh, it's so good. All right. All right, so what did you guys bring? I know, I think, Izzy, you mentioned what you brought. Uh, Crystal, what kind of device did you bring? I have something very similar to Izzy's. Okay. So it's safe to say that you both go down the hills, probably not to the extreme recklessness that uh, Gadget's up to over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You right? just see us pass you. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was it? I was watching some stand-up comic, and I think it was David Spade. He was talking about how he went to a, 
to a ski resort or whatever and he was just like they were like now nah, stick to the bunny slope and all this but his one buddy's like hell no we're going up the hitler's ball sack <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, like, it's like the biggest death drop ever <laughs> it made me crack up laughing <laughs> um <laughs> anyways so you go up and down a few times now you know the a couple hours go by you're having fun at one point i'm going to say that what you look over and you see one of your classmates mave fitzgerald and as you're up and you're like sitting down in the snow taking a rest she kind of uh looks over to both Gadget and Tyler, and you see she's setting up a tube, a long three-person tube, and she's like, uh, hey, uh, Tyler, and, uh, I keep forgetting your real name, what's Gadget's name? Is it Rupert? Rupert, Rupert yeah. right. She's like, Tyler and Rupert, uh, you want to join me over here? This, this thing needs three or else it kind of loses control, if you don't mind. I look to Tyler because I, I don't talk. To, the only girls I talk to are Izzy and Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. I'll just nod. Awesome. Okay. Good. Good. She uh, she sets it up and she sits in it and like so it's enough so that three of you can sit in, put your feet in the middle, and you have two handles each to hold on to. It's like one of those big tubes, right? I don't know if you've ever seen those. Oh. Those get kind of, seen kind of wild and can get out of control a bit. <laughs> uh, so you get in there. Yeah, it's just all of that out of control. <laughs> and you start going down the hill. As you cling onto the tube's handles, the rush of cold air and exhilarating speed blurred, blur the winter landscape into a thrilling whirlwind of white as you're spinning around in circles. The bright sun beaming overhead, casting dancing shadows through the pine trees that are lining the side of the hill while the laughter echoes in the crisp winter air as you zoom and spin downhill. Um, I'd like all of you to make a test to see if you can stay on the tube. Not a test. It's kind of a... Or well, just it, like a 2D6 test. Yeah, it's a standard test. test unless you have any dexterous traits uh, like acrobatics or something. I got or, athletic. Would that apply here? No. Nope. I'm not sure. I, no, I athletics so. is all I about mean, your physical yeah, I don't force. Think it would. Uh, the acrobatics is for keeping your balance and staying on something. So uh, yeah, no, this wouldn't. I'm just reading the description, so I'll just do a standard two pieces. Um, have myself and Izzy seen the two boys run off with her? You definitely did, yeah. Okay, okay I stand up and I kind of oh shield God. my hand above my <laughs> eyes, watching this. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, I fail. <laughs> I rolled two d6s. All right. Okay, so, um, what I'm gonna say happens as you're spiraling down this mountain, Maeve is screaming with laughter and holding on for all <laughs> she can, uh, and Gadget, you're locked in, man, you're, you're used, you got a need for speed and you're used to this kind of stuff. Yeah. And, a lot smaller, I feel like too. Gadget is really sort of like leaning right down, being as aerodynamic as possible, is like becoming part of the two. <laughs> like an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> and, uh, One with the two. And because you essentially got double sixes, I'm going to let you pass one of those sixes in this situation over to Tyler. As Tyler is, you hit a bump, boom, and like the boing, and Tyler is ready to launch into the air. Um, and Hands come loose. I'm like off the tube for a moment. For a moment, and I'll let you describe how you're able to help him if you want. I see him bounce up off the tube, and he's about to just, you know, do that smack in the hard snow right on his backside because the tube's going out of the way. But somehow, it's close enough to my foot that I can nudge the tube back to where he's going to land once he flew out of the tube. So he's going <laughs> to land back in the tube. Keep going. <laughs> you save him from possible injury <laughs> and or hilarity. <laughs> and you get to the bottom of the hill, and as you spin to a stop, Maeve just leans back, her back arched out over the dew, and she's just cracking up laughing. <laughs> that was amazing. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, Tyler's still sort of, like, recoiling from, like, all 13 years of, <laughs> like, this flash in his eyes with that one big bump. <laughs> I just wiping the snow off my glasses and saying, I think if we added some more weights, we could go faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, so with so, that, it sort of comes to after a moment once you stopped and all that. It's like, okay, back on up. So you chuckle and you make your way back up. Now, when you get back to the top, all of you kind of meet up again. Maeve, you see a couple of Maeve's friends show up. So she's th- she says, thanks, thanks, guys. If you want to go again, let me know. And she rushes on over <laughs> to say hello to her friends. Um, but you hear over a megaphone. Uh, we need more contestants for the wild slide race. So get over here if you're going. I'm more going. contestants. Prizes on the line. Oh, Gadget, we have to. Oh, we have this in the bag. And what about Izzy and Crystal? This I gotta see. <laughs> Only I see. Enter? <laughs> I don't know, but I definitely want to see what it's all about. I'm going to do it. I'm going to enter. Well, you rush over, and you can see they have a dedicated area of the hill, clear of trees. It looks pretty safe. And uh, you can see that they have a lined up set of waxed up crazy, crazy carpets, heavily waxed (laughs) crazy carpets, nice little blue ones. Uh, for each contestant to use. You notice the contestants that are already there are uh, Peter Gumman from school. He's already there, ready in position, along with uh, Grace, who is also in your class, and another person from your class, Brandon Jones. So, the three of them are there. Um, It looks like... they're kind of trying to keep it within the relative same age group for this sliding con- condition. Like you got to be within a certain age group. That's why you all recognize them from school. Uh, they're all ready to go. As you approach, you all going to grab a crazy carpet and line up? Yep. Yes. What about you, I Crystal? I kind of hang back. I kind of hang back and, and <laughs> I'm rubbing my left arm as I'm like staring at the crazy carpets. Go on, Crystal. Okay, fine. And then I go ahead. Okay. You go over there. Um, Brandon looks like he's just cracking jokes to Grace. Uh, Big smiles on his face. And uh, Grace is there, like, trying to offer him some kind of tips. And Peter is just kind of there off by himself with a stern face. Looks pretty focused, like he's going to show up these two kids. And then you come up. You grab uh, your crazy carpets and you line up. And he's like, all right, we got enough contestants. All right, so first one to the bottom finish line wins, and the winner gets free hot chocolate and marshmallows. And he got you all lined up at a nice line. He says, on your mark, get set, go. And he shoots a cap gun (laughs) that goes off. (laughs) And with that, you all push off and you start going down. With the crazy carpets beneath you, the snowy hill becomes a speeding canvas of exhilaration. The sun cascading a bright glow on the glistening landscape. The pine trees blur into a green and white mosaic as you speed downhill. The wind tugging at your clothes, and you feel the sense of excitement and laughter bubbling from deep within. Suddenly, a large bump sends you airborne. For a brief moment, time is hung in suspense. Can you stick the landing? We're going to find out. So, we got to make some tests as you all (laughs) soar through the air on waxed up crazy carpets and got to land it. So, I will point out that, Izzy, you have advantage because of one of your traits. And Crystal, you have disadvantage because holding onto a crazy carpet with one hand Mm -hmm. would be quite difficult. You have 50% of the control of this crazy carpet. Tyler's going to feel so bad for getting her to do it. (laughs) Everyone else rolls a standard 2d6 test. Okay. Do you want to roll together or like one at a time? Which Let's do it together. Yeah, I'll chuck, chuck your dice. I'll roll, okay, NPC. together. I'll roll the NPCs after. Okay, you ready? One, two. Oh, somebody rolled. Oh, sorry. 
we were going to do it together. <laughs> oh, I'm not landing this one. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and Izzy? Oh, when? Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. And so, give me a sec. I'm going from left to right. Peter? Grace? Oh, no! And Brandon? Okay. Oh. So as you're going down, the first set of air <laughs> launches. Hey, Peter and Brandon are toast. Yeah. Yeah. You see, um, the th three of you. So Grace passed, as well as the rest, the three of you. Everyone except Gadget, right? So. Yeah. <clears throat> what did Gadget guess? No. Uh, something into one. No. Yeah, yeah, he didn't pass. So the three that make no. it, you stick the landing with a blast of snow shooting out behind you. The others, not so lucky as they tumble, spin, and roll down the hill, eating snow. They're out of the race. Um, yeah, Peter eats snow as well. Brandon rolls, and he's cracking up laughing the whole time. He's spiraling out of control <laughs> and goes over to side into a big drift, and he's just laughing. He's like the most joyful kid you've ever seen. He's loving it. <laughs> Peter... You just hear him curse and swear using adult language as you all <gasps> blow by him. Uh, all right, those still in the race, test again for a second bump. Okay, oh, that, now do the countdown, we'll do it. Save, where are all these bumps coming from? <laughs> they set them up on purpose. There's three oh, large bumps that they put there on purpose to make the race interesting. Gadget, I'm gonna win this for us. I'll avenge you. All right. Okay, so, who wants to do the countdown? I will. Okay, ready? No, oh, no, Eddie, go ahead. Three, two, one, roll. <laughs> uh oh. Mine didn't roll. Uh oh. Yes. Oh no. Oh. oh. Okay. So okay, I know I got it. Count my first ones, which didn't. I don't think they did it. Crystal, <laughs> roll the one. <laughs> Uh, oh, sure no! Did. Izzy sure failed. did! Yeah, Izzy, you failed on the first one. <laughs> Tyler got the double success. Um, and let's roll for Grace. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, no. But she got a complication. Success with a complication. All right. So, Izzy, you, uh, you're normally all over this kind of stuff, but something about this bump, it just, you hit it on a weird angle, you thought you were good, but then the thing flips, and when you land, there's a bit too much on your left, and you spiral out of control, catching you totally off guard and shocking you. You thought for sure you had this in the bag, I bet. Um, Crystal, you hit the bump, and you hit the ground hard. Just a... <laughs> and you just, like... <laughs> and you feel like it, oh, like a thud in your arm, uh, your other good arm. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and you just eat snow, and you're like half buried in the snow, and you got a bad Charlie horse in your good arm. Uh. And, and Tyler, you're all over it. You stick that landing like a boss. Grace lands it, but she is spiraling, like fishtailing, like <laughs> out of control, <laughs> but she's still on there as the third bump comes up. She will now roll with disadvantage. Um, okay. No the way so it's just me and her now. <laughs> but she did Shit. it with this advantage. Okay, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Ooh, no! pressure. So as the third uh, bump goes off, you see the finish line in sight, and you just spike in. You land way too forward on your crazy carpet, and you just face plant right into this hard snow. And Grace, some, by some grace of God, is able to gain control of this crazy carpet. And she slides across the thing backwards, but still. <laughs> but still on it. <laughs> and, uh, she, uh, yeah, she stands up and she's just like, What? I won? No way. Oh, what the? And she, her mind is blown. And she goes over and helps you up, uh, Tyler, since you were there, <laughs> like, face landed. She's like, Tyler, I won! I yeah. beat you! Sure did! Wow. Uh, but, uh, congrats. I beat the like, great just, uh, Tyler at something. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you'll remember this day for years to come. 
Enjoy your hot chocolate. <sighs> I most certainly will. Uh, so by now, the rest of you guys get on your crazy carpet and you gently slide down <laughs> and rally up at the oh, bottom. Oh, I don't. I'm, I, if I get my crazy carpet back, I'm going to the bottom of this hill at full speed. <laughs> All right, Gadget whizzes by. <laughs> 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 it comes to an abrupt stop. Uh, the rest Fast thing. sliding is my thing now, apparently. It's it's what I do. <laughs> so she meets up with the rest of the three of you guys as you rally up with Tyler. Right? She's just like, gets her hot chocolate and uh, her marshmallows. And uh, as you guys rally up, she just walks over to you guys and says, oh, Hey guys. So anyways, uh, a bunch of our class are getting together down by uh, Gentlewood Creek. And she like points just off a little ways. She's like, I think they're gonna get a fire started and they're gonna actually roast marshmallows there for everyone. I can't go, my mom is gonna be here in a few minutes. Of course, a perfect day like this to hang out with everyone in our class and I gotta go to my uncle's house. Oh, he's having a birthday party for my cousin. Yeah, just my luck. Well, I didn't want you guys to miss out. If you wanna, if you do go, tell me all about it. Have some fun. Thanks so much. Congratulations on your win! <laughs> She's holding up her uh, rainbow-colored marshmallows in a cup of steaming hot chocolate. <laughs> that is so sweet right now as she walks away. So close to being mine. Well, you can't win them all. Certainly try. Yes, you can. So I think you did great, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. I tried to avenge you, but oh, well, it was a good race either way. Yeah, crazy carp. It's hard to hold on to. It can't be modified. Or can they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just instantly lost the block. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, should we head over to Gentlewood then, if uh, they're going to be starting that up this evening? Yeah. Like what time is it now, Eddie? Like, yeah, it's, uh... I don't know. It's getting close to lunchtime, but like, it's, okay, probably, so no, it's, it's not for a while. Actually, it's about eleven in the morning. No, they said it's starting up now. Oh, I thought it was like okay. No, no, it's, it, they said they're getting it on the go now. That's why, and she got to leave now, so she was just letting you know. Okay, so I guess we'll make our way over that way. Oh, you're going to Creek. Uh, right. I think so. All right, so. All four of you head down to the creek to see what all the hubbub is about. Amidst the towering pines of Gentlewood Creek, the winter sun sheds patterned lights on the snow-covered forest floor, where a fast-moving creek meanders with a gentle murmur. The thick canopy above, adorned with latticework of frost-kissed branches, creates a serene sunlit haven casting dancing shadows over the crystal-clear flowing water beneath the icy patches. You now see the following kids here. <laughs> Carrie Cohen. <laughs> no, she's not looking like that at the moment. <laughs> Is she a pilot? He is on. That's the most attitude I've seen in a 13 year old girl. And she <laughs> has. Just so. Like, what was that pout? <laughs> Carrie, you know Carrie to be uh, very self centered. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm not surprised with that look. Yeah, she uh, takes her looks seriously, and uh, she's too cool for school. Um, <laughs> You're a 13-year-old ace fighter pilot. You can't be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she and... totally came over her on her own skidoo. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> All right. There's also Jimmy Gleason. <gasps> Gasp. Jimmy. Uh oh, it's Jimmy. It's Jimmy, Jimmy Gleason. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, Jeremy Root. Luscious Lux. <laughs> oh, what did you say his name was? Jeremy. Jeremy Roop. <laughs> Roop. Jimmy Roop. Roop. R O O P. Roop Roop. And, uh. Roop, Roop. Yeah, so it's the three of them. They're hanging out there with their uh, tubes and sleds, the just tubes. off to the side. There's also <laughs> two older students here. Debbie Duffy, she's 16. She's three years older than you. Look at her hair. Jealous. 
Yes. <laughs> Look at that volume. <laughs> Jazz, like John Lovitz. <laughs> and, uh, and she's there with what you're assuming is her friend, another 16-year-old um, named Isabel. They're, the, those two older teens are kind of like just a little bit off to the side. Um, they're standing there. The other three that you know from your class are more gathered together and chatting as you approach. So we're just gravitating more to the kids our age in our class. <laughs> yeah. You walk up to them and they're like, Roop, Roop is like, oh, hey guys, glad you can make it. You want some marshmallows? No, the fire started yet, but here. And he whips out a giant bag of big, juicy marshmallows. Oh, amazing. Yes, thank you. I got some Twizzlers. Or some licorice, or whatever they're called in this day and age in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and he whips out some licorice as well. <laughs> He's like, yeah, so uh, Henry, Dennis, and Camila are out gathering some firewood. So we can get a good fire started. They'll be back any minute. Thank you, Twizzler. Just chew on it. Yeah, same here. I'm getting a bit hungry. I've worked up an appetite. <laughs> you are there uh, just chilling. Anything in particular? You're just going to just wait a few minutes till the people come back with the uh, things, I assume? Yeah, just like idle gossip. Like, did they go down the hill? Who did they see? <laughs> okay. Yeah. What were the names of the kids who were going to get in the uh, firewood? Yeah, uh, there was uh, Henry. Mm -hmm. You know him as Henry Crouch. <laughs> Dennis Graff, the redhead that you already met. <laughs> oh, confident no. redhead with the cheekbones for days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Godlike <laughs> features and uh, and Camila. You know Camila from your class as well, Camila Garcia. Speaking of Camila. Camila returns with a bundle of broken branches and twigs. She walks up the aisle, drops over, or drops them on the ground, bends over, lay them on the ground, that kind of thing. When she does so, she inadvertently tugs on her winter coat sleeves. You know how, like, when you bend over, your coat sleeves kind of, like, go short? Like, your sh mm -hmm. jacket is too short for you? Um, and then you see an abrupt shift in her expression. Like, a deep sense of concern for a moment. And now she's, like, standing there looking around confused. You watch her. I can... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I need like... some help. Oh, what? Oh, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, come over, come over. And you see her. She kind of like face palms for a second there. Oh no, 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 no! My bracelet. Where is it? And she seems to be frantically here, like maybe... pulling up her sleeves, looking for her bracelet. Maybe it's caught here in the in the branches you just brought. I start looking through the branches if, if it's there. All right, you search through uh, with no luck. You do not see it there. Mm. And now she's like walking around the area looking just frantically being like, oh, it's my bracelet my mom left me when she died. I have to find it. Oh. <sighs> well, here, how about, where did you go? I can go with you, we can retrace our steps. Yeah, we'll go together. Okay. Yeah, you guys gotta help me. Yes, you gotta help me backtrack and find it. All of you, come on, come on. And she's like looking at you, Tyler, and Gadget, and Roop, but Roop turns away, looks back at the river, and eats some licorice. <laughs> That's a nope. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, more eyes, uh, definitely a better chance of finding them. Because, uh, is it, is it still actively snowing right now? Yes, very lightly. Just like a oh, nice okay. light bit of snow coming down. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely want to find that sooner or better before it gets covered up by, uh, some fresh snow, so. Uh, takes where you were. And Gadget, are you going or staying? Yeah, we can just follow the tracks that she just left here, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Come on. And she, she's like really kind of pushing you guys to follow her but you know her to have kind of um a very domineering like dominating kind of attitude as you can tell by her picture <laughs> she's got a resting bitch face all the time she uh <laughs> she's very much likes to tell people what to do 
Uh, so that's nothing out of the ordinary for her. But you're going to go along? Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. All right. So you're all going to try to backtrack her footsteps in the snow. Um, okay. Well, with that, we will go to switch to this scene in the forest because we don't need the sounds of a river anymore. <laughs> As you trek through this... Nothing if it went wrong in the forest. Never. (laughs) So, um, navigating through the snow, you're cautiously, you know, taking your time, following Camila's tracks, searching for what she describes as a silver bracelet amidst this vast snowy expanse. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Several painstaking minutes go by. Or a jolting discovery seizes your attention. Is it sunny out? Like bright lights? It's still like lunchtime or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a bright sunny day. However, it's pretty dark here with the thick canopy now uh, in the forest. Occasionally you'll have a path like you can see there in the scene I set. But for the most part, as you're trekking through where she was traveling, uh, you're under the canopy of the tree, so it is fairly dark. Um, weren't you with Dennis or Henry? Where, where did they go? Were yeah. they with you? Uh, no, we kind of split off, went our separate ways, not too far off. Oh. We, he, I could hear him most of the time. He was around. Oh, where's that bracelet? Oh. <sighs> and she seems kind of like more stressed. And uh, I'll get you all the raw perception for me. Advantage for Crystal with your good eyes. It's just a standard test for everyone else. Yes. I do not pass. <laughs> I do. Well, only one person passed. Who was it? Hey, oh, I got a five. Passed. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> My dice look good. So Crystal failed. Is he passed? Some of the, some of the dice's uh, colors all look the same, so <laughs> when they roll the same time, it's hard to see who's is it. All yeah. right. Izzy yeah. and Gadget. Izzy and Gadget. Um... As they're looking through the snow and looking into deep tracks, and she's like, oh, I picked up some branches over here. Um, you two look to the left, and you see red splotches and a trail of crimson, <sighs> accompanied by two sets of footprints that lead off to the west. Oh, I don't like that, Tyler. That looks, that looks like blood. What? Over there, the red and the footprints and the splotches. Yeah, someone might be hurt. What? We gotta take a look. Camilla. Did you see this when you were here, Camilla? What? What? No. No. Oh my god. No. No. Oh, and she's just kind of like in shock here at a moment, looking at it the same as you are. Well, it could be Henry or Dennis that could be hurt. I call out to either of them. All right, you shout out their name. Yeah. Uh, you do not hear any response. Uh, Camille, I think your bracelet's going to have to wait. we got to see if they're okay. Uh, Are we sure? Should we go back and get the police? Uh, uh, I'll, uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go... I'll go get help. Yeah, I'm going to go get help. And, uh, and she just clearly is noping out of here. And with your well-beaten path of footprints where you all four of you just trek th- through, she turns and starts to <laughs> rush back, uh, rushing back towards the creek. Hey, where's she going? Um, I guess she's heading back. I guess the bracelet isn't that big a deal, but uh, uh, we should take a look for uh, Henry and uh, Dennis, see if they're hurt. We'll just go a little ways because, like, I think we should, I should, I think we should get the police. Yeah, but the tracks are here. We should see where they end up. Yeah, I know. We can always follow the tracks back. We're not going to get This could be, this could be dangerous. They could be really hurt. They didn't call back. That's huge. That's a big deal. (sighs) If we wait around, the tracks are going to be gone. Fine. Tyler's going to start following the tracks. Okay. Um, you can all roll to try to follow the tracks. Um, 
I will say it's pretty easy, so it'll be a standard test. Yeah, more than likely, some one of you are going to hit it. As you all try to follow these tracks in the snow. I got it. Look, complication. <laughs> um, complication is you get whipped in the eye with a branch, you cause one stress. <laughs> I think I got a complication as well, so I miss it more than saying. Alright, the complication is you whipped your best friend in the face with a branch while walking <laughs> through the trees, and it caused you one stress. <laughs> Knocking his glasses off, and he had to go find him and put him back out again. Oh, great. I help him, I'm not gonna leave him like that when I realize, but I'm still stressed out by it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I uh, missed it and rolled a one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, with you, I'm gonna say, yeah, you kind of slip and your foot goes down into what was like a little boggy area, so you're like plunks into a bit of like water, and it breaks through a little bit of frozen water that you didn't know was there, and from like the knees up, it's soaked in cold water right now, um, which okay. means, you know, if you spend much time out here, you're gonna take a little bit of uh, some penalty for cold effects in a short amount of time. However, <clears throat> with those who succeed it, you clearly see which way it goes, and you only follow it for what seems like less than a minute before you a har harrowing scene lies before you. You see young Henry Crouch. He lies motionless in the crimson snow. Blood seeping from a puncture wound in his left leg. His vacant gaze meets the forest canopy above. Skin pallid and mouth agape, stuck in a state of shock, surrounded by the eerie stillness of the forest. As well as a set of footprints in the snow heading further to the west. My character screams. This is horrifying. You all need to make a stress test at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> oh. One. <laughs> you all fail. You all fail. You all take, take one point of stress on this side. Oh, I'm already down to stress. This is stressful. Uh, I'm going to, like, like, how much blood is around him? He's actively bleeding from his leg. I'm going to see if... Uh, I want to roll a save test to see if I have a spare piece of fabric or something I could probably wrap around that to stop the bleeding. Okay, go for it. As part of my uh, quartermaster ability. So a save test would be uh, just a regular test? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I don't. <gasps> uh, with, spare pieces. With a complication, <laughs> as you are. Um, okay, I'm going to say as you're reaching through your stuff, all of your belongings and like gadgeteering quartermaster type stuff that you have on you kind of spills on the ground as the strap on your backpack gives way and it all kind of spills out into the snow. I'm going to just check on, like, Henry himself. Like, not so much the wound, but just sort of, like, see how he's doing, if he's conscious or whatnot. Okay. I'll start packing my backpack back up, see if I can... Yep, that'll take a moment as you okay. are over, nail down in the snow, trying to put all your belongings back in the backpack and having to root through the snow to find some of the little gadgets and cogs and whatever else you got in there. Um, wrenches and stuff. Um, all right, so Tyler, you're the first one to rush up. What are the other two girls doing? I'm frozen. I'm just staring in shock. And Can I pick up a stick? Because you said that there's stuff that, like, for the footsteps go further on and not in the way to get help. Correct. So you're going to try to pick up a hefty stick. Roll luck for me to see how good of a stick, whether you can only find little crappy branches or if you're lucky enough to find something that would work as a improvised weapon. You are unlucky. Most of the vegetation around here is pretty healthy, and any twigs that you do pick up are a bit rotted and not of a significant size. Uh, I hold this little stinny stick anyway. I'm just <laughs> like, I will protect my friends. Yeah, all you can really do is whip somebody in the eye with this thing, but uh, 
Um, if you take another action in a few moments, you could further your search, but right now, at quick glance, you're not lucky enough <clears throat> to have one right next to you. Um, all right, Tyler, um, you wanted to go out and basically check to see how what kind of state Henry's in? Yeah. So you can do a standard test, kind of like a medical okay. test. I would doubt you have any skills for medical. <laughs> yeah, I well, got nothing, so let's just say. Oh, jeez. Jeez! Now, you've <laughs> seen a few injuries in I've seen a lot of injuries on the ice. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, with that roll, I'm going to say you look him over. His wound is bleeding at a pace where if he doesn't get treatment immediately, like if that blood doesn't get stopped, he's going to bleed out very quickly. Uh, looks like he's already been bleeding for a while. And as for him, he's just pale and motionless with his eyes open, lying on his back, staring up at the canopy above him, motionless. You don't know if he's knocked unconscious or dead. You're, you're, with that role, I'll say you think he's dead. Even though he's actively bleeding out? Yes. Something ain't right. What? Like his eyes, like, it's like somebody you could imagine who maybe fell cracked your head on a sidewalk and like was enough to like kill you but you're still pumping out blood yeah like you can you can be dead and still pumping out blood for a bit so i feel confident to know that he's dead you're pretty confident that he's dead but you're no medical doctor that's just your yeah, yeah, yeah. opinion like you've seen people get knocked out on the ice but there's something different with this uh guys i i think he's dead we need to go. We need. We need. We need to get the police. We can't stay here. I'm scared, but, guys. But what happened? Like, look at the wound. Can I? Where I'm there, I don't know if this would be part of that success or whatnot. Can I see what could have caused that wound? Like, can I see like, or <clears throat> if I need to make another check? Yeah, that's okay. this is more of like an investigation type check. So, yeah. yeah. No, I was, like, what? <laughs> my initial thing was just to check on him. And now with that, I was like, shit, he's dead. And now I'm sort of like, in this, uh, my eyes are just sort of going to the wound. Like, what could have done this? Like, I was thinking, he, at first, Tyler was thinking, oh, he must have, like, cut himself out of something in the woods. But, like, a cut is, like, isn't going to, like, do this, isn't going to kill him. So now my eyes are going more to, like, the wound. Yeah, because he's got snow pants on and they're soaked, right? So now you've yeah. got to move them to see what actually caused all this blood loss. Roll a, a test for me. I say to Tyler, you shouldn't touch him. You should not touch him. No, I'm not focused on that. I was like... Failure yeah. and complicated. So as you pull up the leg of his pant leg, you just see blood gushing. And it's... You can't even make out whether it's a slash, an impale, or what. It's just... With that roll, it's just you're... You kind of almost got to vert your eyes a little bit. Suddenly... <laughs> You don't notice this. Okay. Neither does Gadget, as he's just finished picking up the remainder of his supplies. Crystal and Izzy, are you watching? Yeah, I got a stick. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, I, am, I am backing away, though. Okay. You see Henry. His eyes suddenly shift and almost like come to life. And in an instant... His hand swiftly lurches forward and grabs Tyler by the throat. And I will use one of my cinematic moments to have triple sixes on grabbing Tyler around oh, nice. the throat. With that, I will get you all to roll stress test at disadvantage for seeing this horrific, what presumed to be dead, kid snap back to life. Nope. Everyone, all fails. Everyone take another stress. Oof. And I think that's where I'll have the end because we only have eight minutes left to our session. All right, everybody. The next episode will be here on the screen if it's available at this time. Otherwise, if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the adventure. Share this with your friends if you want to help this channel grow. And as always, stay in the light.